composed of water, sand, and lime, autoclaved aerated concrete precision blocks are 30% lighter, yet 50% larger than conventional masonry blocks. Lightweight, yet solid, a single precision block can safely support an axial load of more than 20 tons. Pallets and block are typically placed on the job site slab with a moffet or fork truck. In addition, a pallet jack can move the pallets around the job site. The use of a bandsaw will expedite the installation process while providing better precision. The bandsaw is delivered to the job site. Besides the bandsaw, these are the other tools typically used. Delivered to the job site with a precision block, thin bed mortar is used for block installation. One bag of mortar will generally install a half a pallet of block. Filling a five gallon bucket with approximately four inches of water starts the mixing process. Add about three quarters of the bag of mortar. This will allow room for additional mortar and water to be added to reach the proper consistency. The final consistency should resemble that of drywall mud. Please note, water can be added at this time only. Using a spade handle half inch drill with a mixing paddle to blend the water and mortar together for five minutes. Let the mortar rest for five minutes. Remix for five minutes. This simple five, five, five mixing process allows more working life and ensures proper bonding of the mortar to the block. Stacking the block in this configuration is recommended. This configuration expedites the installation process by keeping the surfaces free of dust and debris. Once the block is stacked for convenience during installation, the slab is shot in to determine its highs and lows. It's using a laser to shoot in the slab. However, a transit can also be used. Unlike traditional masonry, a maximum of three quarters of an inch bed joint is recommended. Several reinforcement systems are compatible. Most are cast in at the time the slab is poured. One is standard rebar. With this system, cord blocks are used, pre-soaking the cord block prior to the bond being poured. Compatible reinforcement system is the go-bolt system, which uses a threaded rod to make the connection for proper reinforcement. Other similar threaded rod assemblies may be utilized. Use a flat blade screwdriver to back the rod out of its protective sleeve. This exposes the rod for the coupler connection later in the installation. Next, verify the threaded rod locations. Typical corner placement should be approximately four inch by four inch from the outside edge of the slab, with mid-wall threaded rod locations approximately five inches from the outside edge of the slab. A simple piece of duct tape can protect the threads from mortar or thin bed. If errors occur with the placement of the reinforcement, the slab can be drilled and the reinforcement rod epoxied into the slab. Check with local building officials regarding details. The first level, called the leveling course, is used to correct any deviations in the slab. Accuracy of the leveling course is vital to the remainder of the installation. What we've taken is our measurements from the slab shot using our laser. We've determined that the quarter inch is our highest measurement. If we come around, we've got plus eight, zero, the lowest part being a negative three sixteenths. The overall condition of the slab is in very good shape. What we want to do is start in the highest point and run to the lowest. We'll set a minimum bed joint here, so when we get to the lowest point, we will not exceed three quarters of an inch leveling course. Just in reference, if you were to go with the lowest point setting the block, this could force you into actually rip material to still allow the minimum bed joint at the highest location. So we recommend starting high and going to the low. If you find your residential slab has gone beyond the variance of three quarters of an inch, what you'll have to do is rip material uh, to compensate for the thickness. We don't want to exceed the three quarters of an inch, so you rip the piece and attach it to the bottom using a thin bed mortar. This will ensure that we do not exceed three quarters of an inch leveling course. The head joints use thin bed mortar. Remove the clean block from the stack. Note the ergonomic handhold and precision blocks, which contribute to ease of installation. Set the level course blocks into a full bed of type M, 
N or S mortar, which is supplied by the project's general contractor. A rubber mallet is used to assist with leveling. Check the level on both sides of the block for accuracy. The top of the leveling course block is reshot in with a laser to establish the leveling course elevation. We know we are going to set block material at the plus quarter of an inch. We'll set this using the laser, putting on a minimum bed joint, uh, typically some around three-eighths of an inch. We'll set these two in a 90-degree corner. With the laser transit already reset to that height of the block, we'll transfer that benchmark now to every corner. We will set all corners involved so the masons behind us just have to connect string lines to establish the same running heights. Typical corners are squared in at 90 degrees. Once the corners are set in at the established elevation, then the block between the corners can be ranged in using a string line. For long walls, a masonry twig will ensure the proper height. Cord block is placed at the location of the reinforcing rods. The first cord block in the leveling course is notched to create an inspection hole. When using a threaded rod assembly, save the cutout piece for fill-in after inspection. Absolute accuracy is of paramount importance to the leveling course. Remember to use a full bed of type M, N, or S mortar, but no more than three quarters of an inch. Scrape off any excess mortar. Imperfections that occur in the leveling course can be corrected using a rasp and sanding board. It is extremely important that the top of the block is brushed off following sanding. Every course should be brushed prior to installation of another course of block. Dirt and debris contribute to inaccuracies. Thin bed mortar contains very high bonding properties. The installation crew protect raw concrete surfaces, such as garages and porches. By spreading job site sand on the concrete floors, bonding and staining from the thin bed mortar will be prevented. Again, the top of the block should be brushed off. To ensure proper placement, window openings are marked onto the leveling course. Precision cuts are made to allow for window openings. Because of the bonding properties of the thin bed mortar, a two to three course lead is all that is recommended at each corner. As shown here, it's an eighth of an inch joint. Also note that the minimum running bond of four inches is all that is required. Using a notch trowel, a one-step application of mortar is recommended. Following this simple step will accelerate the speed of installation. A margin trowel is used to clean excess thin bed mortar from the installed block. Using a margin trowel straight edge also can installer a first chance to range in the block. A precision cut is made and dropped in to complete the course. Residential construction with bay windows is easy. Make a single cut at 45 degrees. Rotate the piece and coat with thin bed mortar and attach to the original block. To maintain accuracy, measure to the thickness of the material being used. The necessity for additional customized block can be achieved in the field. When needed, cores can be drilled. cord block can be used for chasing plumbing pipes. 
lentils may be used for specific openings. Modifications to any openings can be achieved by using a handsaw, circular saw, or reciprocal saw. After saw use, use a sanding board to smooth out any roughness and remember to clean off block surface to prevent inaccuracies. To make the connection with a go bolt or similar threaded rod assembly, a groove is routed and the rod is installed. This is done by attaching a straight edge to the material to use as a guide. Using a carbide wood bit, the groove is easily routed Remove the nut, attach the two inch coupler, then install the rod. There are two options with go bolt or similar threaded rod assemblies at the bond beam connection. The first option utilizes a two inch washer, sleeve, and nuts for threaded rod assembly specifications. A second option would involve bending the half inch rod into a hook that terminates into the bond beam as it would with a rebar system. When needed, patch is used to fill the inspection hole and the groove when a threaded rod assembly is used. Any damage caused during installation can be repaired, plus handholds can be filled using patch. The patch, mixed with water only, should be prepared in limited quantities because it sets quickly. compatible with precast, form, and pour concrete products. There is U-block for bond beam detail because it utilizes a two-rod bond beam, one on top of the other. H-block is created by field cutting 8 by 8 by 24 inch U-blocks. H blocks allow installers to pour from one U block to the next U block. Using a pump grout mix to fill the bond beam, lentil, and core blocks as required. Once installed, the pouring of the bond beam, lentil, and core blocks is completed as usual. Truss strap placement is standard per truss manufacturer. In a dry climate, Pre-soaking of the block with water may be necessary. Environmental commitment goes beyond its inorganic ingredients and manufacturing process. All product pallets and coverings can be recycled. Besides being easy to handle, cost and time saving, durable and structurally sound, while being compatible with existing construction practices. It's thermally and acoustically insulating, fire, termite, moisture, and decay resistant, and promotes healthy indoor air quality. With a proven 70-year history, produced in 48 plants in 29 countries on four continents worldwide, commitment to quality and the environment in producing autoclaved aerated concrete makes it clearly the better way to build.